Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be making a collaboration video with my new friend Alexa from the Duval Homestead. Um, you guys seriously need to go check her out. She's an amazing cook. She has a beautiful home. She shares all kinds of different recipes and decor ideas and she's really an inspiration and I just love her to pieces. So I will link her channel down below as well as the link to her video. Alexa is going to be making a sourdough apple pie that is naturally sweetened. I cannot wait to see it. It looks so delicious. So be sure to go check out her channel down below. So if you head over there, be sure to subscribe and tell her that I sent you. We both decided to do like a fall inspired dish because it is finally fall. It's officially fall and that happens to be my favorite season. So I'm going to make a butternut squash lasagna. And what I've done is I've just cut the ball end off of my butternut squash and then I've peeled it. Um, if you're gonna do this, be sure that you have very strong arms or possibly a very strong husband to do it because it is hard work. It is not easy to cut a butternut squash and it's not easy to peel them. But I did it, so woohoo. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really sharp knife and I'm going to cut this into slices, kind of like lasagna noodles. You want very thin pieces. This is probably honestly a little bit too thick, but you want about an eighth of an inch because you want the, the noodles to get done. Um, you don't want them to be like crunchy you know, when the rest of your lasagna is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep slicing this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, um, which mine is obviously not gonna be perfect, but we will work with it. We'll see what happens. And you're not gonna be able to see each of the slices. So, you know, if they're not, even if they're small like that, it's okay, we can work it all into the pan. Um, I actually cut up two butternut squash and it's probably going to be a little bit too much, but we'll see. I just, I would rather have too much than not enough. So after you have it all sliced up, then um, you're going to set it off to the side and then I will show you what we're going to do next. The next thing we're going to do is make the sauce that goes into the lasagna. What I have here is one small onion and some chopped garlic, you can add as much as you would like, um, and some olive oil. And I'm just going to kind of get this started, get this cooking. And to that, I'm also going to add some Italian seasoning. Um, this is something that I bought bulk at the Amish uh, market up the road from me. And I'm going to just eyeball probably, I don't know, about a tablespoon or so of the Italian seasoning. If you want, you can use fresh herbs, obviously. But I like to add those in now um, just to kind of toast them and bring the flavor out a little bit more. And I'm going to let this cook for a few minutes until uh, the onions are translucent. After your onions and garlic have cooked for a few minutes, you're going to add in a couple of the larger cans of crushed tomatoes. stir this in together if you have fresh garden tomatoes obviously I would highly suggest using those and I'm also going to add in a little bit of salt And then a tiny bit of pepper. 
Um, you could also use an already jarred sauce if you would like to. But I thought I would just make this really super quick. Plus it tastes a lot better. I also like to add a pinch of sugar if I'm using canned tomatoes just to take that little bit of tartness that they have away. It helps to balance out the acidity. Now I'm going to let this come up to heat. And while this is coming up to heat, I'm actually going to um, brown up some ground beef. Um, if you want to make this meatless, that's an option. Um, you could use ground chicken. You could use, um, like I'm using ground beef. Um, and however much you feel like your family needs, um, just go with that. I'm making quite a large lasagna. Um, I have three kids and so they eat quite a lot. <laughs> and so I like to make that. Plus we like to have extras for leftovers for the next day. Here I have about two pounds of ground beef. And I'm going to brown up. And I'm going to add some salt. pepper. And I'm going to add some more of that Italian seasoning. I'm going to let this cook. Now we're going to add some ricotta cheese to a bowl along with one egg. And then to that I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese that I grated, um, probably about a half a cup and I'm going to just toss it all together, mix it up really well, and then we'll set this off to the side until we're ready to build our lasagna. Okay, now we're going to put the lasagna together and I'm going to just um, lay this all out in the pan. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, nobody's gonna see it, so if you, need to just sort of mesh it together then that is perfectly fine. Um, you don't really want to have like super thick pieces on top of each other um, but obviously I want my whole the whole bottom of the thing to be covered. So I think what I will do alright that looks good. Now I'm going to take um, the hamburger mixture the ground beef um, what I did was I went ahead and added some spinach to it so if you want to do that that would be cool and then on top of that I'm going to just ladle the tomato sauce and like I said you know, you guys can eyeball how much you wanted this. Honestly, I did not measure anything, which is typically how I cook. Um, which, I don't know, I guess it makes it harder to make YouTube videos. But hey, you know what, I've been doing it for quite a few years. So, um, I haven't had too much of a problem with that. But, um, you know, typically you kind of want measurements. But you can just make it as little or as much as you want of this depending on your family. And then I'm going to just dollop some of this ricotta all around. I'm not really going to um, spread it out. I kind of like having that surprise little bite of ricotta every once in a while. Okay, and then I'm going to put some mozzarella cheese that I grated over the top here. Yep. 
there's some bigger chunks just because it's a little bit harder to grate than um, most cheese. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of the squash. And you can see some of these I cut just like perfect, but some of them not so perfect. <laughs> That. Now I'm going to add another layer of the meat. I'm going to try to do about three layers, so I'm going to do like a third of the toppings at a time. Of course, I'm probably going to have a lot of the ricotta left over, which is fine. You can um, put that in the fridge and like save it for another meal. Alright, now I'm going to add the, what do I add, the sauce. <laughs> I usually don't layer it the same each time because, ah, I just made a mess because I forget, like, how I layered it, but I think this will be good. I'm trying not to make messes like I do. You want to be sure to have enough sauce so that, you know, it'll cook, help to cook the squash um, while it's in the oven. And now I'm going to go ahead and dollop the ricotta on here. You could also probably take a knife and swirl it in if you would want to. But I don't think I'm going to do that. Alright, and then some more cheese. And if you have if you have a lot of squash left over, if you have animals like my rabbit will probably eat this. Um, if you have chickens, I'm sure that they would love to have that little treat. Okay, I think this is going to be like the last layer. And just as a little bit of a reminder, because I know this video is has been probably super long by now, um, you guys definitely go check out my friend Alexa. She is super, super sweet. Her videos are so inspiring. She does a lot of home decor, a lot of farmhouse decor, which is gorgeous. Um, she makes a lot of yummy recipes. Um, she does a lot with sourdough and just natural living and essential oils and all the good stuff. So be sure to go check her out and subscribe. Please subscribe to her channel and tell her that I sent you. And give her video a thumbs up as well because that always, that's always a good thing to do. We gotta support each other because you know the way this world is right now everybody needs to be friends and now I'm going to bake this in my 400 degree oven I'm gonna wipe this off too just so it don't you know burn on there but I'm going to bake this in a 400 degree oven for probably close to an hour um, what I'm going to do is stick a knife in there to make sure that the squash is done and soft and then I will show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven.